Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on work and energy. The topic of this video is kinetic energy, and we want to know what is kinetic energy and how can you know whether or not an object has kinetic energy? What is the kinetic energy formula and how do you use it? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. Kinetic energy is often defined as the energy possessed by an object as a result of its motion. Any moving object will possess kinetic energy regardless of which direction it is moving, regardless of whether it's speeding up or slowing down, and regardless of how high above the ground it is. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion, and it's pure and simple. If an object is moving, you know for certain that it has kinetic energy. The amount of kinetic energy an object possesses depends upon two variables, how much mass is moving and how fast that mass is moving. That is to say, kinetic energy depends upon mass and speed. We can represent this by the formula that the kinetic energy is equal to 1 half m times v squared. In this formula, m represents the mass in units of kilograms, and v represents the speed in units of meters per second. And if we substitute known values of mass and speed into this formula, we will be calculating the kinetic energy in units of joules, abbreviated capital J. We've learned in the work unit that one joule is equal to one newton times a meter, and we've learned from Newton's laws that a newton is equal to a kilogram times a meter per second squared. So we can say that one joule is equal to one kilogram times a meter per second squared multiplied by a meter. And if we simplify that mess of units, we have one joule is equal to one kilogram times a meter squared per second squared. Whenever we introduce a new quantity in physics, we identify it as being either a scalar or a vector. And when it comes to kinetic energy, kinetic energy is a scalar quantity. There is no direction associated with the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is fully described by numerical value alone. We can use the kinetic energy equation as a guide to thinking. Let me demonstrate how. From the equation for kinetic energy, we would reason that if the speed increases, that the kinetic energy would increase as well. And if the speed decreases, the kinetic energy would decrease as well. If the speed is constant over the course of a motion, you would reason that the kinetic energy is constant. And wherever the speed is greatest over the course of a motion, that's where the kinetic energy is greatest. And wherever the speed is least over the course of an object's motion, that's where the kinetic energy is the least. Whatever the speed is doing, the kinetic energy is doing the same thing. The kinetic energy formula can also be used to predict how a change in one variable might affect another variable, like how a change in speed might impact the kinetic energy value. The kinetic energy formula is written above, and during the course of a motion, objects seldom change their mass. So the 1 half times m in the formula is a constant, and we could say that the kinetic energy is equal to that proportionality constant multiplied by the v squared. Put another way, we could say that the kinetic energy possessed by an object is directly proportional to the speed at which it moves squared. And so, if over the course of a motion the speed of an object is increased by a factor of 2, doubled, then the, we would expect that the kinetic energy would be increased by a factor of 4, or quadrupled. And if the speed of an object is increased by a factor of 3, or tripled, you would expect that the kinetic energy would be increased by a factor of 3 squared, or by a factor of 9. And finally, if the speed happened to decrease by a factor of 2, like if it were halved, then you would expect the kinetic energy to decrease by a factor of 2 squared. That is, it would decrease by a factor of 4, and become one-fourth of its original value. We can also use the kinetic energy formula to solve problems for unknown quantities. The basic idea is this. The kinetic energy equation has three variables in it, K, E, M, and V. And if you know any two of the three variables, you can solve for the third one. It's probably straightforward to say that if you know the mass and the speed, you can use the kinetic energy formula to solve for the kinetic energy. But what about solving for mass and speed? If you know the kinetic energy and you know the speed, how would you solve for the mass of the object? Well, you'd have to do some algebra on the formula in order to rearrange it to a form that looks something like this. The mass is equal to 2 times the kinetic energy divided 
divided by the speed squared. And what if you know the kinetic energy and the mass? How would you solve for the speed? Well, you again have to rearrange the formula in order to get the speed value by itself. It would look something like this. V is equal to the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the mass. The basic idea is that you would find everything inside of the brackets. You'd go 2 multiplied by Ke divided by the mass, and then you would take the square root of that entire quantity. Of the three forms of that kinetic energy equation, the form which is most difficult for students is that last form, the V equal equation. So I'm going to do one practice problem in which I solve for the V using the kinetic energy equation. So here's the problem I'm trying to solve. A 4.0 kilogram object has 72 J's of kinetic energy. Determine its speed or the V value. So the solution begins by writing down what you know. You know the kinetic energy is equal to 72 J's and you know that the mass is equal to 4.0 kilograms. And I'm trying to solve for the V value. Now I write down the kinetic energy formula and then I substitute known values into the formula. I end up with 72 J's equal to 1 half times 4.0 kilograms multiplied by V squared and I'm trying to solve for V. So in the next step I'm going to simplify the right side. So, and I'm also going to get rid of those distracting units. So, 1 half times 4.0 is 2.0. So, I write 72 J's is equal to 2.0 times V squared. I'm trying to solve for V, so I need to isolate the V squared by itself. So, in the next step, I divide both sides of the equation by 2.0. I end up with 36 is equal to V squared. I'm one step from an answer now. To solve for V, you need to take the square root of both sides of this equation. And when you do, the left side becomes 6.0 and the right side becomes V. So there you have it. The speed of this object is 6.0 meters per second. It's at this time in every video that I'd like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources that you can find on our website. We've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have two concept builders, a Minds on Physics mission, and a pretty awesome tutorial page. Any one of these activities would help make the learning stick. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.